It is finally here, everybody. Week one, 2023 NFL season. It is officially Chargers week. And man, there are no shortage of storylines as it pertains to Dolphins versus Chargers. You obviously have got the two reverses, Herbert. You've got year two in Mike McDaniel's system. You've got Vic Fangio making his debut with the Miami Dolphins. We'd all would have loved to see that with Jalen Ramsey, but you got to wait a little bit longer. But you know what? The wait for week one is officially over. Today is my first of two Dolphins Chargers preview videos. Today, I'm going to talk about some of the latest news as it pertains to the team. We're going to talk some, some matchups, some things to keep your eye on in Dolphins versus Chargers. The next preview video I'm going to do, we're going to talk more about the game, obviously. But I want to answer some viewer questions as well. So in the comments, you got any questions you'd like me to address in that video, go ahead, drop them in the comments. I'm going to do my official prediction in that video as well. And also, if you didn't see the last video, if you leave a comment, well, one, get subscribed. But also, if you leave a comment in this video, you will get entered to win this bad boy. It's a signed Jalen Waddle, 8 by 10 Any video I do, if you leave a comment in that video, leading up to Dolphins Patriots week. I'm going to pick a, uh, a winner in the recap video of that particular game. Go ahead, get entered to win. That's exactly how you do it. All you got to do, it's simple. Get subscribed, leave a comment. Let's talk a little bit about some of the news that we've seen over the last couple of days because you can't talk about the Miami Dolphins without addressing the offensive line. And I know that the Miami Dolphins depth chart if you if you talk if you hear Mike McDaniel talk about the depth chart he's more of like yeah it's just kind of there I just want the players to be ready for the roles that they could potentially be in each week don't necessarily look at what it is well I'll tell you a lot of fans kind of got up in arms because Liam Eichenberg is listed as the team starting left guard and we all kind of thought you know what this is Isaiah Wynn's job one his performance production has been better two Liam Eichenberg he's been injured that nagging injury that's kept him out of some preseason games, some training camp uh, practices in general, and then just his sheer performance. It's not like he's been lighting the world on fire. So if I'm betting on it today, I'm saying that Isaiah, no matter what the depth chart says, I'm thinking Isaiah Wynn gets that start. I have been told that they're really just going to take it up to the last practice, see who's more ready, see who's more prepared, and come down to that. If I'm betting on it today, though, my money's going to be on Isaiah Wynn. And the other thing that kind of stood out from that depth chart was Brandon Jones being listed as the starting safety opposite of Javon Holland. Now, there's a part of me that also thinks maybe Deshaun Elliott gets the nod when it comes to starter, but I'm not quite sure that it's necessarily going to matter because I could also see if Brandon Jones is, is truly healthy, ready to go. He obviously avoided PUP when training camp started. He avoided PUP short-term IR here when the actual regular season has started. So that's a good sign. Plus in Wednesday's practice, he was a full participant. So signs are pointing up, but just not playing any preseason games, not getting really any of the team reps in training camp kind of leads me to believe that maybe they'll continue to still ease him in. So even if he plays, I think we're going to see a healthy dose of a guy like Deshaun Elliott as well. So those are just a couple of takes on the, on the depth chart that was released. But we also need to talk about the status of Teron Armstead. So I'm recording this on Wednesday, and Wednesday's practice report had Teron Armstead and Elijah Campbell really as the only DNPs on Wednesday's injury report. But if you think about the injury reports in the past when it comes to Teron Armstead, has he ever been not a DNP or limited? That's just kind of his MO. That's his status when it comes to the Dolphins the last year plus now at this point in time. And we all know it's been his goal. He's highly motivated. He wants to play in every game. He wants to be back for week one. And I think selfishly we all want him to be back because it's Kendall Lamb starting at left tackle if Teron Armstead can't go. And I think we feel fine to a certain extent with a guy like Kendall Lamb, but we all know that the all pro, the pro bowler that Teron Armstead is. If I had to make a call, like if it was my decision, I'd be like, Teron Armstead, like we got to have the long game in mind. There's everything. We, you're all hyped for week one, but man, the season is more than just one week. I'd rather them shelf him, give him an extra week to prepare, get really healthy, come play it week two against the Patriots. Let's do it that way. We'll see how it all plays. But it's going to be curious to see that status of Teron Armstead because, like I said, it'll be Kendall Lamb if Teron Armstead can't go. Um, from that practice report, Justin Bethel, Julian Hill, and Jalen Waddle were all limited. 
Kind of as a surprise, I said Brandon Jones was a full participant and also a full participant was Devon A-Chain. So I'm really curious to see how the running back kind of carries time all get split up as well. But good to see Devon A-Chain back as a full participant as well. Let's talk a little bit about the Chargers in general, because if you remember that game last year, it's 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 revenge time. Man, they they took it to us in L.A., the part of that part of that West Coast trip where the struggles really started to mount. Not to mention a primetime game, national televised. Uh, the, the the big time audience got to see that one, and all the all the Dolphins doubters, the two or two haters, just got to kind of have their day. And a big thing that they did in that game was they really focused on taking the middle of the field away. Because what was our bread and butter? It was Tyreek, it was Jalen Waddle, it was Tua connecting with those guys week in, week out, leading up to that game. So it says, how does Mike McDaniel take that film and that experience? How does he kind of flip that around? Well, one of the things that I think we're going to see, and one of the things that preseason maybe indicated to us a little bit, is the run game. And not only just the run game, but the involvement of running backs in general. Because I know a lot of us were like, the running game just seemed to kind of disappear at points in time last year. When they stayed committed to it, and when they actually gave it, our yards per carry were actually pretty solid. But like we saw in the preseason, especially those first couple of preseason games. What do we have over a hundred rushing yards in both of the first halves of those games? And it was Miles Gaskin who's not even on the team. And Mostert had some good carries and Savon Achman had some nice carries, but it wasn't just on the, on the ground either. It was getting those guys involved in the receiving game. We saw a chain catch what four passes in the first game. Savon Ahmed had had some nice catches um, in preseason as well. So I think that's one way that you can kind of overcome that issue. And we're not going to completely ignore the middle of the field. Tua, Tyreek, Waddle, like I said, they've proven that they can do that. But you get those running backs going, you get some check downs, you commit to the run game like we saw in those preseason games. That is one potential so solution for overcoming some of last year's issues. Hey, along with your comments as well, if you've got remedies, go ahead and drop them in the comments. I've got a matchup to watch. One's defensively, one's offensively. We'll start with the offensive one. It's just what I said, and it's Raheem Mostert and those Dolphins running backs against the Chargers defense. And I don't have to go into too much depth. What I just talked about right there is kind of laying out what I wanted to say. But if the Dolphins can establish that run early, like they did in those preseason games, watch out because I think that is the evolution of this offense to make that passing game. I don't even want to say more potent because it was damn near as potent as could be, but maybe more consistency. We get more consistency in that passing game by having that run game that you can rely on and fall back on. And I think that Sunday might be a Raheem Mostert type of day because Jeff Wilson's on the IR, so we're not going to see him for the first four weeks. Zaman Ahmed, man, he showed out in preseason. Look out for him as well. Devon A. Chain, like I said, uh, an, a full participant in practice today, but still a rookie, still kind of dealing with that injury. We'll see how it goes for him and a guy like Chris Brooks as well, who obviously made the team. So keep your eye on that run game. But then defensively, I wanted to talk about this because if Teron Armstead doesn't play, it's Kendall Lamb at left tackle, and we all know it's Austin Jackson at right tackle. And I will give Austin Jackson some, some props. This is probably the best offseason we've seen from him from training camp practices to preseason games. His overall physique and body and attitude, he, he looks more of the part this time around but you're facing Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. And not only just those guys who are proven all-stars, but it's week one. They are hungry, and more importantly, they are healthy. Those two guys have dealt with some, some kind of those nagging injuries as well. They are healthy, and they are eating it up. I haven't looked at their schedule yet, but I would be willing to bet that if it's Kendall Lamb and Austin Jackson starting at tackles, of all of their games, that is probably the weakest pair of tackles that they're going to see all season long. But the one thing I will say is that last year when we were compromised on the offensive line and, and playing with the likes of Brandon Shell and Greg Little, I personally thought that Mike McDaniel did a really good job of just kind of improvising and doing things offensively to kind of help nullify that pass rush. And, and it, was, it was running the ball a little bit more. And it was chipping with the running backs and the fullbacks and the tight ends and getting to a little bit outside of the pocket. Doing those little things to help kind of give him that extra time. Keep your eye on, on what Mike McDaniel draws up and what he does. Because Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack, I'm a Dolphins fan, but I will say it. They have a definite advantage over guys like Kendall Lamb and Austin Jackson, if that's who indeed we are starting. 
let's just pray maybe that Teron Armstead is healthy, but that is definitely a matchup to watch. One last thing that I'll leave you on in today's video. Right before I started recording, like I said on Wednesday, the Dolphins announced that they had extended long snapper Blake Ferguson through the 2026 NFL season. So our long snapper is here to stay for at least a few more years as well. But that is what I've got for today, Dolphins fans. Like I said, get your questions submitted uh, for the final preview prediction as well. I will get to as many of those as possible. With every comment, you get entered for that bad boy as well. So get entered to win the, the Jalen Waddle 8x10. But that is what I've got for today, Dolphins fans. And until next time, fins up.